Okay, so are we ready? So in this talk, I'm going to be talking about uh, segmentation. Okay, uh, so you'll see that. Uh, so segmentation. What do you mean by that? We yesterday we were talking about object detection, and now we'll be covering object segmentation. And it's basically very similar, but the difference is that instead of giving bounding boxes for all the objects, you want to give accurate uh, segments, or uh, you want to predict the accurate boundaries of the objects in the images. Okay. So before we start on how do you actually do that, uh, I th actually I missed uh, this slide yesterday with the detection. So for classification, we have all this uh, big data. Side. So we have ImageNet, and we have all these millions of images that we can use to train. But for detection, and particularly for segmentation, data is not that large. So we have uh, these two well-known data sets. So Pascal uh, Visual Object Classes, which has uh, only 20 classes and about like 5,000 images. And then there's Microsoft Coco that has more, more images and more classes, but you see that we're nowhere near when compared to ImageNet. So we have dense annotations, so every pixel is labeled, but we don't have so many images. So just wanted to make that clear that we're not in the same place exactly. Uh, so when we talk about uh, segmentation in computer vision, there are actually two separate tasks. So now I'm going to briefly introduce them, and then I'll go in, de in, in depth in the two of them. So the first one is called semantic segmentation, which is the task of labeling every pixel with uh, a class. So in here, you'll notice that uh, you don't differentiate between instances in the same image. So here in the image here with the cows and the grass, you see that there's all this blue blob that kind of looks like this, but you don't differentiate on how many, you don't know how many cows there are there based on that output. So this is basically the most common uh, uh, task that computer vision scientists have been working on when they refer to segmentation. But you'll see that, well, it's useful, it kind of tells you something about the image, but you don't know how many cows are there, so that's kind of important, right? So that's actually the second task that is, so it's been there for a while, but now it's getting a lot of attention because now we have data sets that we can actually train on this. So it's instance segmentation, which is the same, but we want to label each, uh, each instance of each uh, class in the, in the image with the boundary and the class. So we want, basically want to count how many uh, instances for each class we have in the image, okay? Uh, so we'll go one by one. We'll start with uh, semantic segmentation because it's the one that is more popular and what people have been done uh, in the past like more often. So uh, we can look at this like basically the same way that we did with detection. So we have an image and we want to segment. So we want to segment the objects and we want to basically classify every pixel. So we can just take a, a small bounding box and you, you can slide it over the image and at every, you center it at, at every pixel, you slide that image to, through a convolutional neural network and you get a class and you do that for all pixels and that's it. But that, you'll soon realize that that's very inefficient. So uh, recently with the CNNs, oh, this happened, okay. Uh, so with CNN, what people do now is something that we call fully convolutional networks. So what you do basically is that you directly input, input the whole image, and the output is directly that uh, this uh, map in which each, each pixel has a probability of being uh, one class or the other. Uh, so that works really well, and that's really efficient. But the problem is that the, the output that we get is much smaller than the input. So we don't have a label for each pixel. We just have a, a scale down version of that of that image and, and then we do have the, the pixels uh, labeled but we can do something about this right we could make this larger and better so in this paper here that was uh, published uh, last year in cvpr they do something like this so they have a, a fully convolutional network that takes an image and outputs a segmentation map um, but what they do here is that what's something that they call learnable upsampling, up, upsampling which is actually what kevin just explained here which what we call deconvolution uh, so I'll go a bit into this. Just here's a reminder of how a convolution is done, but I think that you all know at this point. But so basically, you have your input and you have your output. You have a three by three uh, filter, and so basically, you take it in the input, you, com you compute the dot product, and you get the output, and you slide it uh, through the input, and you get your output. And that would be three by three with stride one. But if you do it with stride two, so then your output gets smaller. Okay, so that would be the same. But now with the deconvolution, which is kind of what uh, Kevin explained uh, before, so you have your input and you want to make it bigger, but you want to learn that transformation. You just, just you don't want to just upsample right that. So you take your filter and you take your input, and basically what you do is you uh, copy the weights of the filter into the output, and, but you um, give them weights based on the input. So you multiply the filter by the input and you just paste the weights there, and you move your um, filter and then you, you do the same and where it overlaps is just sum. Okay, 
So that's uh, what they refer as deconvolution, and it's actually the same as the backward pass for a convolution. So that's what I, I don't know if you remember, but uh, I think it was on Tuesday. I was talking about visualization, and there were these deconvolutional approaches. So that's why that's that's the name here. So it all it's all related, right? Um, so just before I go on, there's this uh, deconvolution name that nobody likes, basically, in the literature. There's a few people that are very angry, apparently, about this. So there's a few papers where they say, no, I'm, I'm not going to say deconvolution from now on. I'm going to say convolutional transpose or whatever. So yeah, I don't know. So don't remember this name in case in 10 years someone <laughs> says, no, <laughs> let's forget about this. Um, yeah, but so that's the name uh, for now. There's also this other concept that they introduced in this paper, which is uh, uh, something called escape connections. In which, so basically, you have your convolutional neural network, and from the last convolutional layer, you want to upsample and learn that uh, upsampling. But you can do that not only in the last layer, in the last convolutional layer, you can do it in the ones before. And then you just combine the results, and it, apparently it works much better. Um, yeah, so there's also, so you could do this, uh, so you could do as many deconvolutional layers as you want, and there's actually this work that they just went, I mean, I guess they, they occupied the whole memory, because there's, so they do this network for semantic segmentation, and they just use VGG, uh, so convolutional, normal, and then they just flip it, and that's the deconvolutional layer. So that I think that they say like they took like six days to train on Titan X, maybe like I don't know, I don't know how they did that, but yeah, I guess you can go like as as crazy as this. So that's for uh, semantic segmentation. Now let's uh, start with instance segmentation. So remember here, we want to uh, segment all instances in, for all classes in the, in the image. So there's uh, this work that was uh, uh, in ECCV 2014. So you'll see that, or maybe you remember, uh, it's very similar to the architecture that I presented yesterday, uh, that was called RCNN. So here you have an image, and you also uh, compute object proposals. But you'll see that these object proposals are no longer boxes. They are segments. Um, so the idea is that you have these this segments, and you just basically crop uh, the segment in the image. And then you have, instead of one, uh, only one branch, you have two branches, one that takes, still takes the bounding box. So that would be RCNN, as it was, as I explained yesterday. And then the second one takes the, the mask. So it's basically you, you remove the background from the, from the mask. So you have like two separate networks that both learn to detect and to segment the objects. So they train uh, like this, and then there's this post-processing to refine the boundaries of the of the regions. Um, yeah, so that's that's how this works. You'll see, you'll remember that uh, this is very inefficient, of course, because you still have your proposals that you have to forward through the, the entire network. But yeah, that's what they proposed at that time. So then they did this uh, improvement later on. So last last year at CVPR, something that they call hyper columns, which basically what it, what they did is just they, they keep the same network as as before, so the same inefficiency here, but the region refinement is incorporated in the network. So they learn they learn it all together, and the way that they do this is that, is that they extract so basically similar to this uh, skip connections thing when you not only use the output, but you use the intermediate layers. You just do some upsampling so that they all have the same size. You aggregate them, and you just basically extract the segmentation from there. That's how they refine it. So that's what they uh, published at this point. Um, so this is not very efficient yet, but in the code, if you check, I'll have it later in the, in the resources in the last uh, slide. They implemented this uh, trick in where you share com the convolutional computation. So even though it's not published, they actually did it. So you can use that and it should be fast. So then there's uh, finally, so that was uh, quite old when you talk about computer vision these days. So these guys are the ones who, who won uh, last year the MS COCO competition for segmentation. Uh, so what they did is something that is very similar to faster RCNN that I introduced yesterday. So here you have your image, and so yeah, similar to, to faster RCNN, you have your convolutional uh, layer that sees the whole image. And then at that point, you just train a region proposal network that learns to predict bounding boxes. So it's the same as faster RCNN up until here. So then you take these boxes, and you just uh, perform some pooling on the convolutional uh, layers. And from those representations, you uh, try to predict the, the masks, the accurate masks. And then when you do that, then you can go one step uh, uh, forward, and you take these masks, and you mask the convolutional uh, filters, the convolutional layers, sorry, with those masks. And then you get another representation, and from that representation, you classify that mask. So it's a very complicated thing, and they learned the whole thing end to end, and they won, basically. And they used ResNets, which basically I think that it's the key thing to go for if you want to win competitions now. 
Uh, so here are uh, some of the results that they get in, in the paper, which are quite impressive if you look at them. I think that it gets basically everything right. I think the only, uh, there are a few problems in the first one where it misses some people and there's a plant there that it doesn't quite segment well, but it's very impressive that it can detect all, all well, segment all the, all the instances of these people here sitting. So yeah, it's quite, quite impressive. So that's all for uh, segmentation. So we've covered this semantic segmentation and instant segmentation. You'll see that here we are in the same situation as in uh, detection. So they like cafe a lot. So if you don't like it, I don't know if you can do segmentation. But here's the code that I could uh, find for it. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. Questions? Mm -hmm.